Lord, we thank you for even the people that's next door to us. We pray that you would send people to fill their tent. Bless them as well, Lord. It's not about one person. It's not about one church, but it's about the kingdom. And we pray that they be successful tonight. We pray that you would be successful in this place tonight. And that you bless us with what we bless and we stand and eat up. We want to ask you to let's sing Mighty River. Some of you know it, some of you don't, but Mighty River. Ready, Tom? Lord, we ask that you would be glorified in our worship tonight. We give you all the praise and the glory. We're going to ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to come in this place, the Mighty River. There's a mighty river flowing, there's a mighty river flowing in this place. There's a mighty river flowing, there's a mighty river flowing in this place. There's a mighty river flowing, there's a mighty river flowing in this place, oh Jesus, there's a mighty river flowing, there's a mighty invade this place tonight. Send a special anointing. Send of the word, God, that would help us and build us up our faith. Your power. Fill 
clap for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Shake hands with somebody. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Bless you. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Amen. I uh, want to do this. I do think that, uh, you know, it's up to you, but I'll be a little, I'll be five minutes quicker if you decide to go next door and you can be a part of that, you know what they're doing. Amen. So I, I come out of the, uh, here five minutes if you would like to go over there. Okay. Is that all right? So in other words, after Bible study, you're welcome to go over. Y'all act like y'all all messed up, man. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I appreciate it. Okay. It's been a great day. The Lord is blessing, and I just want to continue on something. God had gave me uh, something. When you just get on something, it seems like God will kind of keep us in an area of area that we need. We really need to be made whole. We really need to be healed in a lot of areas of our life, and we really need to. Uh, our families need to be healed. Our marriages need to be healed. Our relationships need to be healed. I want you to just for a few minutes as I think about the school down at Broward County for those kids that was killed today and this mess that it was down at that school. Just for a minute, would you just for a moment of silence, please. Lord, we thank you uh, that you would touch the young man, that uh, the shooter, God, that you would save his life, save his soul. And, God, we thank you, for uh, God, that you would help the victims of that massive killing today. Father, we just ask that you would, all those children that it was affected and seen all of that shooting, God, that you would heal them, Father, heal their minds. And, oh, God, we know the PTSD that will come behind this, Lord. And we pray that you would be with every one of those young minds, God, that they would still rise up and be the people that you're calling for. Thank you for this phone that's going off too, Lord. Thank you for that. Lord, bless us here tonight, Father, and all we do. Thank you so much for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I ain't mean to bust you, but if I hit you, I didn't mean to miss you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I want to talk to you really sincerely about this is important. It's very important. I want to tell you that uh, some of us uh, need to you know, we wallow in things, we stay in things too long, and that's why we can't grow. We, we can't get out of our bed. And this is, I put a cot up here, and this cot is a bed. It's a military cot, but this is a bed that you have. And in the bed, there's a lot of things that's in the bed. And sometimes we are in the bed with things that shouldn't be in the bed with us. Come on now, that'll preach right there. Oh, Lord, Lord. Some of us are in the bed with things that shouldn't be in the bed with us. What am I trying to tell you? I'm no, you don't get too deep on me now because I'm going to break it down to you and show you exactly what I'm talking about. God's whole thing is that the Lord said, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. That's what the Lord wants from every one of us. God wants us to be the best that we can be, every one of us, in our life. The Lord wants our life to be flourishing, to be a good Christian, to walk in righteous, to walk as a good Christian. That's why the Scripture said, Let your light shine that men may see your good works and they glorify the Father in heaven. People are watching you every day. Your family is watching you. People that you work with is watching you. In the community, your neighbor, your neighbor next door is watching you. They watch you when you take out the garbage, watch it when you come in, and people are watching you when you don't even know people are watching you. Even the devil is watching you. God is watching you. Did you know God is watching you? Angels 
is watching over you. Amen. Understand this. I want to go uh, deep into the scriptures here. And, and, and I want to, if I had to label this, it was a pick up your bed. Pick up your bed. Pick up your bed. What is your bed of affliction? Now, I know we can come up and we can talk about everybody else and we can come up and label it what everybody else's problem is, but what is your problem? Really? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, it's funny, man. We can come up with a whole line of things, what's wrong with your neighbor and the next person. But when it comes to ourselves, we kind of have a problem with trying to find out what's wrong with ourselves. The scripture said this, Joy. The scripture, you know what the scripture said? The scripture said this. In every man's heart, in his own self, he is number one. He is righteous. He's the best one. So every one of us, don't nobody in here think they got a problem, right? But I can look at Eddie, and I love Eddie and everything. I appreciate Eddie. He'd be making sure I get home every night, him and his wife. I appreciate that. I got Eddie, and I got Mr. Smith and Mr. Wesson. I appreciate it. Thank you, Eddie. Amen. You y'all laughing, but you better have something, man, because people are crazy nowadays. Who would go into a school and just kill all those kids down there? That that, that bothers me. That bothers me. I don't know. Some of you, you know, say some people are Christians so hard hearted, they don't care. If it didn't happen to them, they don't care. I care about everybody. I care about your children. I, I met uh, Val and Bev, them two, three kids, and they fell in love with me, and I fell in love with them. And I'm, I pray for them kids right now today. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I fell in love with them. I, when, when I meet somebody, it's like, it's, it's like a magnet. I fall in love with them. And if you ever bring your children before me, I'm, I'll be praying for your children. Every one of your children. The need of kids, kids right now, they love Pastor Doug. Yeah, Pastor Doug, I love them too. It's because you got to have concern and love for people. Yeah. And people know when you, do you know people know when you really love them? Yeah. 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 Do you know that, John? You know when people really know you love them? You can't fool people, man. They know if you really love them, right? Uh, Cologne, you know I love you, right? <laughs> okay, listen to this now. Let's go into this. It says, F John, the fifth chapter. After this. There was a feast of the Jews. They were having a good time. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Then there at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, there was a pool. There was a pool there. And which it was called the pool of Bethesda. It was called having five porches on the pool. Whole bunch of porches around the pool. So the pool, what was the pool used for? Why was the pool there? It says this, and there lay a great multitude of impotent folk. People just laying around looking for healing, looking for to be delivered, to be set free. This generation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The world is laying around, and everywhere you go, there's impotent folk. There's blind people. There's halt. There's withered. Waiting for the moving of the water. When will the water move in the church? I'm waiting for the I mean, we've experienced a little bit of, you know, God coming in and doing things. But when, when God really come into the church and God do supernatural things, manifestation when God heal when God just do things out of the ordinary God just heal people heal the blind are you ready for that that's coming for an angel listen an angel came down at a certain season into the pool and an angel would come down and he would trouble the water why would God use an angel to trouble the water? The angel came, represent the Holy Spirit, represent God, 
to make sure healing would take place in these waters. I believe the angel of God have came down upon the church and troubled these waters. Whosoever then first. That's why I always say, don't wait. Be the first one to take a plunge. Be the first one to go after God. Be the first one to pray. Be the first one to study. Be the first one to, to serve God. Be the first in your home. Be the first one on your job. Be the first person to be able to go all the way with God. Be the first one. First, after the trouble of the water, stepped in. What happened when, you did, when the first person went in it? See, don't wait for nobody else to happen because the, it may not be there when you get there. See, you got to move when God tell you to move. You, see, see, it don't, it's just like an elevator. You match the elevator, guess what? It can be 100 people outside waiting to get on the elevator. But whoever the 12 people get on there first is going to go to capacity, and those 12 are going to go where they got to go. So don't sit around waiting when you can jump in. Somebody say, jump in, get in now. The water in the church is being troubled now, God is moving in the church now. The people that got in when God told them, what happened? They got whole. They got healed. See, don't wait for nobody else to do it. Nobody go, everybody wants somebody else to do it for them. Stop waiting for people to do it for you. Amen. If anything's going to happen, you got to do it for yourself. It takes you. As I said Sunday, we are our first worst enemy. You got to do this for yourself. Be first yourself. Pray for yourself. I'm not waiting for Lady T to pray for me. She may forget. She may not. So I got to get up in the morning and pray for myself. I got to pray for you. I got to pray for others. I got to do this. I can't accept or wait for nobody else to do that. I got to do it for my somebody. Somebody said, do it yourself. So they got up. What happened? They were made what? Will you be made whole? Whosoever what? Then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in and was made whole of whatever disease. What, what is your disease? Oh, Lord. I'm looking at the church. Well, I don't have cancer. What is your disease? Well, I don't have that, Pastor. What do you don't have? Well, I don't have this. Let's talk about what you do have. See, we can talk about what we don't have, but what do you ha do have? Some of us have some stuff in our bed that shouldn't be in our bed, and we got to get rid of what's in our bed with us, Lana. If you go to sleep, I'm going to tell you right now, if you go to sleep with a headache and you don't, and let me tell you, more than likely you're going to wake up with that headache. Come on, you ever went to sleep with a tummy ache and you woke up with a tummy ache? Come on. If you didn't do nothing for the tummy ache, guess what? You're going to wake up with that tummy. There's a good chance you're going to wake up. But if you begin to be and begin to pray and to take something for the tummy ache, you probably a good chance you're going to wake up with what? Without the tummy ache. So you got to understand, it's going to take you to do what you need to do, right? What kind of disease do you have? Hmm. Nobody answered. I'm glad. And a certain man was there, which had infirmity for 38 years. How long have you had? How long? <laughs> How long have you had this issue? Now, that, we all got an issue. We just don't talk about it that much. But how long have you had? I'm going to just throw one of them out there. Unbelief. How long have you had that? How long have you had? How long have you had that problem? How long have you had? 38 years. Wow, that's a long time. Well, don't talk about him. How long have you had yours? Come on, talk to me. We talking about everybody else. How long have you had you? How long have you carried this? Some of us have, have unforgiveness. And we've carried the disease of unforgiveness for years. We people hurt us every day. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can hurt me today, guess what? I'm, I'm going to forgive you, but guess what? We ain't going to have no dealings. We may not have no more dealings, but I'm going to forgive you because the forgiveness is not about you. 
It's about me. Me doing what? Moving on. Happy birthday, Miss Watkins. You see what I'm saying? Forgiveness is about you, so I got to move on because it's going to help me to move on. People hurt you every day. The devil has sent people out to hurt you. Some people are angels, and some people are not angels. <laughs> some people are God sent, and some people are God went. Okay, let's go here. He had it for 38 years. But when Jesus saw him, thank God Jesus saw him. <laughs> Have Jesus saw you yet? I'm just asking a question. Because if Jesus sees you, it's going to be a different thing now. It's gonna be, the, whole, the whole metrics going to get ready to change here, Pastor Sonny. The whole, everything get ready to change now because Jesus showed up. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been now a long time in the cage. Don't be trying to hide and thinking Jesus don't know what you're dealing with. Jesus know exactly what condition you really are. You may fool the pastor. You may fool everybody in the church. But Jesus, he said, mm hmm He knows. Listen, get over people. Because people, I'm going to tell you right now, you got to get over some folks. I had to let some people, some people had ripped me off. Guess what? They never ripped me off again because guess what? I got, I got you now. And then they be hiding from you. They know they be done got you. Now they hide. Why you hide? You got come on, hey, to payday. We, they tell you they're gonna take care of you on the date. You gonna take care of me, right? It's just like me. Okay, my mortgage. Okay, here if, if I keep hiding on on the thirty first, when I supposed to pay the man on the thirty first, after a while I will be homeless because I didn't do what kept my end of the bargain. But I think I'm just going to lay up in there, you know what I'm saying? And you know, you, know, you got to, somebody said, pay up. Pay up. <laughs> when Jesus saw him, he knew that he was in this position a long time. In that case, he said unto him, will you be made whole? My question, I'm looking at the church. Pastor Doug is asking you the question tonight. Will you be made whole? I just preached that, right? Will you be made whole? Have you gotten whole yet? Yeah, okay, then will you be made whole? Uh-huh. Okay, read. Now, the impotent man answered him, Sir! Oh, nice and eloquent. Before he was just Jesus. Now, he wants to get all dignified. Sir! I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. Look at your neighbor and say, do you need anybody to do what you're supposed to do yourself? we always expecting somebody else to do in the church what we should be doing ourselves. I'm never going to expect somebody else to drive down to Walmart and get me some pillows to sleep on when they don't know the type of pillows I like to sleep on. And you certainly don't know what I eat, so you can't go to get my food. So if you want anything, look at somebody and say, you're going to have to do this for yourself. I have nobody. He started to make complaint, and that's what we do. I don't have nobody. No, nobody cares. Nobody, the church don't care. Nobody, nobody cares about the church. Nobody from the church care. Nobody would drive me. Uh, you didn't know I ain't got no car. They know why y'all won't drive me. Why the church van won't drive me around and take me shopping? <laughs> to put me in the pool. While I was coming, somebody always get in my place, get in my way. Every time you had funny, every time you trying to get there, somebody else jump in front of you. 
boy, I'm telling you right now, you better get hungry. See, you ain't hungry enough. Because if you're hungry, you're going you gonna to you gonna, you gonna make some room. Somebody's going to have to get out your way because it's you or them. And ain't but much, ain't but much, ain't but so much chicken on the table. So guess what? It's, it's just like me and my brothers. It was, it was 16 of us. Guess what? And it was one piece of meat on there because everything else became soup. And we had beans and rice and cornbread. We had a lot of beans and rice and cornbread. But mama only had so many pieces of the meat. And guess what? You had to go for the meat. You weren't playing around. You had to be late coming to the table. You had to be there when the mama was cooking. Because when you got there and you had them playing around out there, basketball, whatever, playing around, you will be late because all the meat is gone. My brother and eating the meat. <laughs> Somebody said, don't let nobody else eat your meat. Come on, talk to me. And Jesus said unto him, take up your bed and walk. Before I talk about the bed and allow my demonstrator to walk with the bed. Let me just give you some things that might be in our bed. I, 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 I just thought that I would talk to you a little bit about in your bed. It may be unbelief. You, you may be good in one area. But you may be still laying in the bed of unbelief. See, Jesus can't do a lot with unbelief. You got to step out of unbelief and shift on belief. All things are possible to him that believe. So if you got unbelief, that's a disease. That is a bed of affliction. That's what hold back a lot of people, unbelief. You, you could have done did a whole bunch of things, but you don't believe. You can do it. If you don't believe you're going to get a job, guess what? Why even fill out the application? I'm not going to waste my time filling out an application. If I don't believe, guess what? I know I'm going to get the job. Every job I went on, I knew I'm going to get the job. I knew. I already, and I prayed up. Hey, I was praying before I got there. Then I'm praying. I had to slip some oil on it, anointing my hand, and then I walk in the hand, I, in the hand, and, and they, why is the hand so wet? Because I don't anoint my hand. I don't put the anointing on you. I'm telling you right now, I, 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 anoint, I anoint the hand, I anoint the hand, I go in up for the interview, and, and they don't know what's going on. Oh, his hand kind of wet, it sure is, it's been anointed. <laughs> Yes, I done prayed for you. I done prayed for you. I done prayed for myself for the interview. So the first thing I'm getting out of my bed of affliction is what? Unbelief. I got to get it out of my bed. Wow. What is, well, what's another thing, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Depression. Why are you still holding on depressed? Depressed for what? The scripture said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You can't be weeping. And, 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 and if you are weeping, the scripture already done declare. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Did you wake up this morning? Then depression got to be what? It's got to be gone. Get out of your bed of depression. That's what's wrong with it. You, you can't be, you know... Uh, Man, I'm, I'm feeling, no, 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 uh -uh, I feel good. You got, do you know you got to talk to yourself sometime? Y'all yeah, yeah, think the pastor just wake up here and, oh, yeah, 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 pastor, yeah, you the pastor, boy. You don't know that too much is given, much is required. And when you take that step and that plan to go high, the devil's coming at another level. Somebody say, a new level, new devil. So you got to pray more at every level that you go in. That's talking to you, some of you ministers that got a job. Now, you, just because you said you was going to do this for the church, that yeah, the devil wasn't going to sit back and let you just go up and do it. He's going to come after you. He's going to attack you. Come on. You want to be a, a certain, you know, in the children's ministry, guess what? Your children are going to be the first ministry God going to use. 
to see if you can handle it. Their children are acting all cray cray. So God said, take care of your home first. Charity begins at home, then it's spread abroad. Don't talk about marriage ministry. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Emma. We've been married 50 years, okay? You're getting ready to get a challenge. <laughs> I know her. No, you don't know her like that. The devil loves opportunity. Well, pastor, what else? I don't have that. Do you have gossip? <laughs> Do you talk about people? You, you talk about people. Do you, you say things about things that you shouldn't say? Do you talk about the pastor? <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Do you talk about people in the church? Do you talk about people that's not even Christian? Listen, your mouth, life, and death is the power of the tongue. You do more damage with your tongue than you do physically. So watch what you say. Stop gossiping. So, so, Pastor, what should I do? Get out of the bed of affliction of gospel. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Lord have mercy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This is, well, Pastor, I don't do that neither. Well, well, you just told or what? <laughs> well. Ain't nothing wrong with telling a white one. Ain't no black one a white one. Sin is sin. If it's not the truth, it's a lie. We got to be able to tell it like it is. Some people just lie. Come on, talk to me. I, I had old the guy something, and he says, he says, uh, you know, the devil say, well, just tell him you're going to do it. I said, no. I, I told the man, listen. I do not have it, and this is what's going on, and I'm not going to be able to make it good. Now, stop lying to people and do what you're supposed to do. Stop telling lies as a Christian. Stop, li stop lying as a Christian. Stop, just stop lying as a Christian. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. If you can't do it, tell them you can't do it. Pastor, I can't do that. Not try to... Hey, tell me you can't do it so I can get somebody else can do it. If you can't, if you can't take care of me when you're supposed to take care, just tell me. People be getting some. I'm talking to some of y'all borrowing money. Don't want to get a people their money back when you're supposed to get a man their money. I'm looking. You know, I I be mad. Be looking at you then. I be looking at you then. <laughs> you be looking at if somebody. Don't give yourself. You be looking at them sideways. <laughs> he said Wednesday. Three o'clock. It's three o two. Okay, y'all act like y'all don't do it, but y'all think if you don't say that, if you don't think like that, you lying too. So we got to get out of the bed of what lying. Wow. Woo. This one here. Unforgiveness. Jesus said, except you forgive, except you forgive, I won't forgive you. What did you say? Yeah. Now, if Jesus telling me, I got, I got to forgive you, I just ain't gonna, you just ain't going to do me two times. You heard what I said. I said that again. I, I'm trying to make it eloquent for you. No, I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't going to do me but one time. You're going to bite me one time, and you will never bite me again. Okay? So, I've learned, you can say what you want about me. It don't matter. You don't feed me. You don't take care of me. You can't heal me. You can't deliver me. You can't bless me. You can't help me. You're limited in what you can do for me. Only God can take me where I need to go. So, guess what? The Bible don't say, look unto the pastor from which cometh your help. Look unto the members from which cometh your help. The Bible say, look unto Jesus which cometh your help. Somebody say, I'm going to look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. So I had to get out of my bed of what? Wow. 
Now, this one's going to mess with y'all. B, get this thing here because I want you to walk walk with it. Okay. All you got to do, B, is she'll pop up. When you get, when, it's funny how the bed don't, don't move when, when all this other stuff is there. But when, when, when you get everything lightened, the bed is so easy. You sleep easy. Some of us been in the bed of, oh, I, 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 I'm sick. No, 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 baby, I ain't sick. Tell the devil right now, I am not sick. Somebody shout, Jesus is my healer. Now, if you want to be sick, go ahead. And sickness ain't always physical. Sometimes we are spiritual sick. Sometimes we emote. What you say? Wow, I like y'all. Emotional sickness. Anybody else? Any more sickness? Mental. So your brain be all jacked up. Huh? Your finances is sick. Come on, talk to me. You got to be able to tell a devil, I am not going to be broke, not another day in my life. You got to tell like, you got to tell like, you out of here. You got to tell broke, no more. Come on, talk to me. You got to say, if my daddy owned the silver and the gold and the cattle on a thousand hills, guess what? I am a child of Abraham, and I walk under the Abrahamic blessings. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Shout it again. You may not. Now, I want you to write this down. Write this down. Somebody say, I may not be where I want to be, but I'm, I'm in between blessings. In other words, you're here, and you're headed there. You may not got there yet, but you're in between. Whatever you do, don't curse yourself and say, I don't have. Okay? Because you ought to be saying, I can do and I can have whatever my daddy has. So sometimes you got to get your bed, pack up your bed. Uh-huh. Come on, start walking around. Be walking around this place. You got to pick up your bed. Pick up your trouble. Pick it up from where it was and begin to walk with it. See, the more you stay down with it, the more it's going to trouble you. In fact, you're probably going to get some bed sores. Somebody shout, I'm tired of laying here feeling the way I feel when I know that the Redeemer of the Lord say so, and I know that God has raised me up to do something great, so I'm going to have to pick myself up. Somebody say, pick yourself up. Pick up your bed, whatever your bed of affliction is, and walk with it. What is our bed? Unbelief. Gossip, unforgiveness, depression, lying, sickness, and the list go on and on. Keep walking, B. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. What is your affliction? <laughs> now, listen, you try to tell me you ain't got no affliction, and the scripture said this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. If you're righteous, you're going to have some affliction. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I went. I, I, the, uh, I was in there, and the, the lady, the nurse, the doctor called me today. She says, uh, "Miss Alexander, uh, uh, John, the VA, they run and tell me when the VA calls." So the VA, I said, "Okay." I said, "Put them through." Was it you? I said, "Put her on through." She gets on the phone. They always get the prettiest woman to give you the baddest news. <laughs> so she's trying to tell me. Well, this is what this report said. And I said, listen, I say, Doc, I appreciate you. When are you going to be leaving? Because I said, you know right now. I said, do, uh, she said, where did I call? I said, you called to a church. This, she said, I thought I had yourself. I said, no, you called the right place. Then you a pastor? I said, yes, fire baptized, Holy Ghost filled. And, and I said, I believe in healing. I said, and all 
All these reports have nothing to do with the report of the Lord. I appreciate you, but my report says I'm blessed. My report says I'm healed. My report says I'm, I'm healthy. My report says I'm free. Somebody say, believe the report of the Lord. I know I got to go, but question, what is your bed of affliction? I got to go. What's stopping you from going forth and being all you called to be? I'm asking you a question. Before I go to Galatians 5 and 7, I ask you this question. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 7, but I want to ask you a question. What's stopping you? You, I didn't ask you who or what's stopping you from going forth and being all God called you to be. Keep walking, D. <laughs> Galatians and seven said, five and seven says, come on, help me, help the preacher. <laughs> you ran well. Well, I used to be, I used to be, I used to be the church on time. I used to pay my time. I used to teach Sunday school. I used to preach. You, you what? You used to. When I was coming up, you used to. My mama, you used to. What are you doing now? Well, you did. Somebody say, you did run well. It's funny how people, they come in and try to impress the pastor. Well, I used to do this in church. Okay, baby. What you did is not at hand now. What you're doing is at hand now. I don't need what you did. I need what you can do now. You did run well. But what happened? Who hindered you? What hindered you? Was it your bed of affliction? Pick up your bed and walk. That you should obey? The truth. That's what's wrong. A lot of people don't want to tell the truth. You tell people, no, no, hey, you know, tell, well, this little, this little thing here saying all unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. We try to pr make it pretty. I don't like the homosexual. What about your unbelief? Wow, pow, yeah. Oh, Lordy. You ran well, but who hindered you? Uh huh. That you don't obey the truth. Okay, I gotta go. First Thessalonians two and eighteen. What happened? Hope I'm glad you asked the question. Somebody had to hinder you. Oh Lord, I'm glad. Okay, wherefore we should have come unto you. We should have came to you, but we didn't come to you. We didn't pick up our bed of affliction. We should have. Even I, Paul, the pastor, once and again and again, should have came. Should have, should have, should have got in church. Should have sung in the choir when he told me. Should have praised the Lord when he told me. Should have gave when he told me. Should have, would have, could have, would have. But Satan, who hindered us? The devil have hindered us. And it's the devil that we write. It's not people. It's the devil. The scripture says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But we're wrestling against principalities. Uh, I, 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 sometime I'll be talking to her and my wife, she, she says, is that Doug or that who is that pastor, that Doug? <laughs> Did you get that? My wife asked me because... I, I say something smart or say something. She says, is that pastor? Is that Douglas? Who am I talking to? She asked me a question. And can I be real with you? Sometimes it's not pastor. Sometimes it's Douglas. And Douglas is not feeling you. Y'all need to tell the truth. They say the truth and stay in the church, right, Bev? You, you, you and Bev good all the time? Huh? John, y'all good all the time? Sandra, y'all good? Y'all perfect? Y'all perfect? 
Uh, Frank, are you guys perfect all the time? What about you guys? Huh? Is there any perfect people? Let me know, cause I won't. I won't mess with this now. <laughs> I'm just. I've been trying. I've been looking in the church a long time. I've been trying to find a perfect couple. Huh? Right? You might be perfect today, but tomorrow, you didn't bring me my milk. You burnt the toast. Come on. You didn't turn the coffee on. You know I was getting up. Why didn't you turn the coffee on? Come on, talk to me. Pick up your bed. Whatever it is tonight. Whatever it is tonight, be bringing here. I got to put it in this arm. Okay, let me show you something. Now, people make excuses. I know I had a shoulder operation, right? And they always on me tell me, pass it on, do this, pass it on, do it. So I don't mess with this one. I'm talking to you, Appa and, and Naomi and John and Carmen. <laughs> they and, and Phyllis. So guess what? I pick up everything with it. I ain't got no excuse. At least I'm getting the job done. So I pick up the what I can use. I pick up just, hey, all I did, I, I'm not, I, I, hey, I'm good over here because I know I can't do it. But here, guess what? I pick up my bed of affliction. I don't stay in it. I don't waller in it. And I pick it up. How many of you tonight will pick up whatever your issue is, whatever your problem is, whatever thing that's holding you back, whatever thing is stopping you, whatever thing is preventing you from being all you can in God. God is troubling the waters. The waters in the church is being stirred. God is one to do. He said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. When I'm a woman, man, you ain't got no excuse now. God ain't got no excuse. That your excuses are over. God's calling you to a high level. Of expectation. I hope you got something out of this message tonight. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I really do. I hope you got something tonight. Thank you so much. I know. Now, do we have some announcements real fast? I can pop those. This is Charlene. Happy birthday. Amen. Don't forget in the back, back there, guys, we had a bunch of stuff. Take five or six of these meals. Because we're going to be loaded again tomorrow and take them to your neighborhood. Amen. Bless them. Amen. Just take them. In. If you don't want them, just take the snacks out of them and then hold the snacks for me. And when Lady T ain't around, bring them back to me. Amen. Pray the announcement, Tom. Welcome to the new church without walls, the perfect church for those who aren't. Happy National Cream-Filled Chocolate Day! Please join us on Sundays for our early bird service at 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m. Sunday School, and 11 a.m. Morning Worship. You are also welcome to join us for Bible study on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. and Friday nights at 7 p.m. for our bilingual service. Pastor Doug will be speaking at Faith Temple Worldwide Ministries in Dinellan on February 17th at 6 p.m. The van will be leaving here from the church at 5.15 p.m. If you need transportation, please sign the van pickup sheet located on the table in the fellowship hall. New Sewell Couples Fellowship for Saturday, February 17th will be postponed until Saturday, March 17th. We apologize for the delay. Happy birthday and anniversary to all those who celebrate in February. 
Your continued support during the new Seawell Building Fund and Tree of Life fundraisers is greatly appreciated. Please see any one of the ushers for your Building Fund contribution envelope. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Don't forget, now, there is some food back there. You're certainly welcome in uh, tomorrow. If you, all you got to do, if you get off late, just drive through there. We're going to go over and we're going to bring. We had uh, some sodas that came over, some pops. We call them soda pop. We're country. And so we're going to be giving that stuff away in the field back here. So all you got to do is just drive through. You don't have to stop. Just drive through there after you get off work tomorrow from 4 to 7 o'clock uh, till you get dark. And then we're going to be packing up. But anyway, that's where we'll be over here tomorrow. And the guys, I appreciate you guys. So you guys still got to come to work early in the morning. But, you know, that's what I'm trying to know. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate it. I got the best guy. I got the best guys in the world. Y'all that come, y'all that work at the church, come on. Y'all stand, stand up. All y'all that work be up at unloading these trucks. If y'all unload the truck, come on now. <laughs> Boy, I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all be doing it, and 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 I don't even be doing y'all like that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all good, man. Y'all good guys. Thank you so much. Bless you. Amen. We're gonna receive the offering, but don't forget to go in the back. But listen, now if any of y'all, I'm serious about this. Please, if you want to go next door to the revival, maybe they can help you with your affliction. I don't know. <laughs> but you're welcome to go. This ain't no one man band. Amen. Whoever can help you, let them help you. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not his benefits. Amen. Would you bring your offering? Amen. Thank you tonight. Wow, boy. Lord, have mercy. Sha-ta-ta-da. Wow. Boy, don't do me like that. You don't hit me like that. Woo! I think I want to preach again now. Amen. Okay, Diane. Diane, help. If you didn't get sweetheart, Dan, come and tell them what you tell them what you got back there. Some of y'all didn't do it. Tell them you got. It. I owe you right now. Okay, I, I have gift bags in the back. If you didn't get your Valentine or sweetheart gift, also have balloons that go along with it. I think it's about 15 bags left. And if you don't get it for your sweetheart, get it for your friend, your ex boyfriend, ex girlfriend, whatever. You don't care where you yeah, get it yeah. from. $35 each, and it's going to help me go to my mission trip to Spain. Okay, Diane's got stuff in the back. She want to do it, guys. Thank you so much. Bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Come on, guys. Come on through, guys. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget, get some food back there. You guys, anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You ready, Lawanda? Lawanda, bless us and bless us as we leave this place. Bless our offering, Lawanda. Now go back and see Alpha and Naomi. Take this food. We got that food. 